Hello learners, I welcome you all to this video program on Ocean Floor and Relief Features Part 1. In the previous video programs, you were introduced to the hydrosphere, the different realms of hydrosphere like the oceans, cryosphere, surface waters and underground water. You also came to know how water travels from one realm to the other through hydrological cycle and the processes involved are evaporation, condensation, precipitation, surface flow, subsurface flow and uh, percolation. So now you are aware of the hydrosphere in brief and in this video program and in the coming video programs of this uh, block on hydrosphere, we are concentrating more on oceans. As you know that oceans cover about 70% of the total area of the earth's surface and it has around 97.5% of the total water on earth. So it is important to understand different processes operating in the oceans to understand uh, the entire hydrosphere. So uh, oceans also play an important role in determining world climates. So, uh, in this video program, you will be introduced to ocean floor and the different relief features in the floor and uh, you will also uh, be acquainted with a hypsographic curve and the different techniques employed in measuring the depths of the ocean. So let's start with the different techniques involved in the measurement of the depths of the ocean. Deep sounding line techniques have been employed by various uh, oceanic expeditions and uh, like sound and echo recording instrument uses echo sounders to transmit pulses of sound of frequency about 10 to 30 kilohertz and calculates the interval of time taken between the transmission of these sound pulses and the reception of its echo. So uh, these are uh, done by sonar which is uh, sound uh, navigation and ranging which uses eco uh, sounding technique with the help of which sound pulses are transmitted to the floor of the ocean and the eco is received at the device and uh, the time taken is calculated which gives the total uh, distance twice the distance of the uh, depth. And uh, since we know the velocity of sound waves in water, so um, uh, distance is calculated with the help of formula in which velocity is multiplied by time and this gives twice the distance of the um, uh, flo ocean floor and then we get the actual distance by dividing the thing by 2. Now satellite altimeters are also uh, used to uh, map the ocean floor. Satellite ocean, uh, altimeters have radar that measures the altitude of the satellite from the sea surface and it ha also has a tracking system that determines the height of the satellite in the geocentric coordinates. So some examples of sea altimeters are CSAT, GeoSat, JSON, NVSAT which have mapped the ocean floor in the past and are also doing it currently. Now coming on to hypsographic or hypsometric curve, it is the representation of different relief features of the lithosphere and hydrosphere with respect to the sea level in the form of cumulative high frequency curve. I will explain it with the help of a, a figure just now. First let us also know that this curve does not represent the actual uh, location of different elevations and depressions only the relative proportions of elevations and depressions in terms of area and height are perfectly represented in it. It was first prepared by Cosina in 1921 and was modified by Swadrup in the year 1942. So in this figure you can see in both the left and the right ones the zero represents the sea level and uh, in the left part of the figure you can see the altitude of different uh, relief features on the surface of earth and below zero uh, you see the depth of the various physical features uh, are mentioned in terms of kilometers. In the right figure also you can see uh, the uh, various physical features on the land area are represented 
and the average height of land is coming around 0.8 kilometers and you can see the maximum height of the mountain is uh, given by 8.85 kilometers that is Mount Everest on the surface of earth and now uh, if you go beyond the zero uh, downwards uh, you can see you have continental shelf different relief features of the oceans like continental shelf, continental slope, uh, deep sea plain and oceanic trenches and the cumulative percentage is given along the horizontal axis. So you can uh, go through this figure to understand uh, a hypsographic or hypsometric curve. I'll explain all the relief features of the oceans uh, in this uh, video program only. Now look at the table distribution of the ocean floor of major oceans at various depth zones in percentage. So you can see the some of the major oceans uh, are taken as examples um, uh, along the columns like Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Ocean and you can see the uh, leftmost column gives the depth interval like 0 to 200 meters, 200 to 1000 meters, 1000 to 2000 and so on and different uh, oceans uh, are shown uh, in the adjoining part uh, like in terms of different uh, percentage which falls along different depth zones like you can see it in uh, bet uh, between 0 to 200 Atlantic Ocean has got highest percentage of its area uh, between uh, 4000 to 5000 meters like 25.8 percent is found uh, at this depth interval Similarly, you can see in Pacific Ocean, uh, a greater percentage of the ocean lies uh, between the depth interval uh, of uh, 4000 to 5000 meters and uh, similarly you can go through uh, the table and uh, compare the percentage of different oceans that lie under different uh, depth intervals. Now you, in this figure you can see different features of the ocean floor. Uh, you can see the uh, seashore which is shown in the leftmost uh, part and then you come to continental shelf area and uh, you can see the level of the sea. It changes during high tide and low tide but uh, it, it is more or less uh, same uh, at the um, level which it's shown over here and uh, then comes the continental shelf then slope then rise and then the deep sea plain and uh, then the mid oceanic ridges you can see then you can also see sea mount and oceanic trenches island arcs and i'll be explaining these separately just now now starting with the continental shelf you can see the it is in continuity with the continents it is a gently sloping area and uh, it has a very gentle slope like uh, slope ranges between 1 to 3 degrees or it can be said in ratio in terms of ratio is uh, 1 in 500. Uh, this ex means that uh, it rises to 1 units when you travel uh, 500 units horizontally and in terms of uh, degree it is uh, about 1 to 3 degree. Average depth is 100 fathoms. Now 1 fathom is equal to 6 feet or 1.82 meters so average depth uh, is uh, ranges up to 200 meters approximately. Shell break marks the beginning of the continental slope area uh, and it is marked by the slope where uh, it, is, uh, it comes to about 1 in uh, 20 in terms of ratio. Average width of the continental shelf for the entire world is about 65 kilometers and it has regional variations like it's wider along river mouths and narrow in regions where mountains appear parallel to the coastal area and there are several um, uh, theories related to the origin of the continental shelf just uh, uh, you must uh, be familiar with them but you will read about these theories in detail at higher levels 
at this level you can just uh, uh, note down the points that sediments brought by rivers and sea waves helps in the formation of our continental shelves similarly faulting along continental margins also lead to the origin of uh, continental shelves uh, continental shelves are also formed due to negative change in sea level when the sea level falls then continental shelf also emerges or uh, is formed in this way there is uh, abrasion work of the sea waves also leads to the emergence of continental shelves submergence of continental lands the gently sloping area increases increases and so the continental shelves are formed in this way also now coming on to continental slope you can see in this figure only in continental slope the slope has increased to a great extent uh, beyond the shelf area the slope ranges between 5 to 60 degrees and in hypsographic curve it falls between 200 to 2000 meters depth so the relief features that are found in this region are uh, uh, submarine canyons oceanic trench etc however this is devoid of any oceanic deposits because due to high slope uh, nothing accumulates at this place so the lower part uh, whatever uh, deposition it receives uh, falls to the lower part of the continental slope where it merges with the deep sea plain and this area is called the continental rise so continental rise is the place where, uh, where there's a huge deposition zone uh, because whatever falls from the continental slope area it gets accumulated over here now coming on to submarine canyons they are relatively narrow deep valleys with vertical side walls and steep slopes just uh, resembling the land uh, uh, canyons and valleys um, and uh, they are found in shelf and slope area they are either in front of large rivers or may have been carved by them which in course of time got submerged into the sea submarine canyons are usually associated with straight coast rather than indented ones the average slope being 1.7 percent although uh, around islands they have a steep slope generally of the order of 13.8 percent they are rarely found on coasts having faulted scarps or oceans which are studded with islands uh, there is abundance of continental uh, abundance of submarine canyons along eastern coast of america extending from canada to cape hatteras now coming on to the deep sea plains you you can revisit the figure uh, while studying all the features now deep sea plains are extensive flat plains found between continental slope and oceanic abyss they account for around 82.7 percent of the total oceanic area and their depth ranges between 2000 to 6000 meters they have uh, sometimes uh, back it was believed that uh, it is devoid of any physical features but uh, the vast monotony of the deep sea plains is broken by features like ridges mid oceanic ridges goets etc and uh, earlier it was believed that they are almost flat but uh, recent oceanic expeditions of albatross have discovered that the deep sea plains of atlantic and pacific oceans are highly rugged indian ocean deep sea plains are uh, leveled just because of uh, its formation from the hard lava extending over hundreds of kilometers in the indian ocean now uh, let's just come to mid oceanic ridge which is very uh, interesting formation uh, in the ocean floor and uh, you must have studied plate tectonics in the previous blocks of physical geography like in block 2 dealing with lithosphere and uh, you must have come across the three types of plate boundaries like uh, constructive destructive and conservative or you can say uh, like uh, diverging plate boundaries are those plate boundaries which are moving away from each other so the gap is filled up by upwelling mag magma which solidifies and forms a new crust along these diverging plate boundaries 
so what happens like um, if the new crust is formed at the along these boundaries uh, so uh, this is also called constructive plate boundaries because there is accretion or addition of the crust at this place so mid oceanic ridges are found along these uh, uh, diverging plate margins now another important uh, uh, relief feature of the oceans are uh, sea mounts and geodes which are undersea mountains formed by volcanic activity that rise for about hundreds and thousands of feet from uh, the ocean floor and they are found uh, near the plate boundaries or also at mid plates because I'll explain this because uh, um, at mid oceanic ridges plates are spreading and magma rises to fill the gaps and near the subduction zones where the, uh, there are um, destructive plate boundaries or you can say converging plate boundaries where the denser plate gets subducted into the um, lighter plate uh, and uh, uh, it melts at a place and then magma rises buoyantly at, uh, towards the surface and erupts to form volcanoes at this portion. So these are uh, uh, found uh, scattered throughout the oceans because uh, since the new crust is being added along ocean uh, diverging plates and the crust is getting subducted along the converging plates uh, or along the subduction zones. So the oceanic floor, uh, whatever the sea mounts which formed uh, along the mid oceanic ridges uh, gets uh, slowly shifted towards the uh, trench area or the subduction zones. So they are widely scattered in the oceans. Geots are sea mounts that have reached to the surface or the sea level and eroded by waves and their tops have a flattened shape. So geodes are just like uh, sea mounts. Uh, the difference is just the, um, that they have reached to the surface of the sea level and they are eroded by waves and their tops have become flattened. In course of time, when they move towards the subduction zones, the, uh, the geodes uh, also get submerged into the sea and become undersea flat topped peaks. Now coming on to oceanic trench, you can again the revisit this uh, figure on the oceanic uh, uh, different relief features of the ocean and you can see the oceanic trench over here. It is the deepest part of the oceans and uh, it is the long narrow deep depressions of ocean floor with relatively steep sides and deeps are the deepest part of these trenches ranging approximately from 7300 meters to more than about 11,000 meters. So uh, examples of oceanic trench are uh, along uh, uh, circum pacific belt which is also called circum pacific ring of fire. I'll explain it uh, why it is called so. Uh, first look at the examples like Curile Trench, Tonga Trench, Philippines Trench and many more. You can go through the books and also see the location of these trenches and uh, there is Mariana Trench which is the deepest of all such trenches and its deepest part is reaching up to a depth of about 11,000 uh, meters and is all known as Challenger Deep. Uh, the shape of the trenches are generally like arc of the circle with island arcs on the other side. I'll explain this with the help of figure. In this figure you can see the formation of oceanic trenches. Uh, there are two plates which are um, uh, converging plates or you can say destructive plate boundaries. So the denser plate goes in beneath the lighter plate and uh, there is a get after getting subducted at a point it melts and you, after that uh, this molten magma gets penetrates through the cracks or fractures and comes out in the form of volcanoes. So the volcanoes are found parallelly to these oceanic trenches and these volcanoes uh, when they uh, reach up to the surface of oceans they form uh, they also form island arcs and you can see in this figure there are so many island arcs along the Pacific Ocean like uh, Aleutian Arc, there are so many, um, you can see the, uh, clearly we see the island arcs of Kuril 
आइलैंड्स जापान आर्क रिक्यू आर्क फिलिपींस आर्क सो द एंटायर वेस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ पैसिफिक ओशन has um, uh, this this kind of activity or subduction zone and this kind of um, island arcs are found and uh, uh, due to the numerous volcanic activity at this place it is also called pacific ring of fire so in this video program you learned about different techniques employed in the measuring of uh, um, uh, depths of the oceans hypsographic or hypsometric curve different relief features of the oceans in the next video program which is a uh, continuity of this uh, pa part of ocean floor and relief features we are concentrating more on the bottom reliefs of the major oceans of the world that is the atlantic ocean pacific ocean and indian ocean thank you